Hey there folks, Santee Theaters on the Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Hey Santee, Spittoons in the Old West, Robert Wedlow. <laughs> Spittoons in the Old West. Yeah, we can do that. In every saloon in every western movie, we see at least one spittoon. Usually it's placed near the bar and served a very good purpose. They were originally developed for men to spit tobacco in when at the bar, brothel, train station, or even the general store. Prior to that, the spitting was usually on the floor, which made for some ripe nastiness. No spit. Although many cuspidors were brass or tin, fancier establishments might have some porcelain or even glass ones. In fact, a folk art named Toll Painting utilized acrylics to pretty these items up. Now the engineering of these is pretty interesting. The wide opening allows for a better target and the slope is to let everything slide into the receptacle. The opening has a lip to it, which is designed to keep the contents inside should the spittoon tip over. Technically, the flat bottom is weighted so that it won't tip over, but a swift kick could send it flying. Uh, you better take this. Speaking of tipping over, passenger cars on trains also had cuspidors. They not only were weighted, but had a much wider bottom to accommodate the unpredictable movement of rail travel. So yeah, as I've talked about before, the pastime of chawn tobacco was evident in the 19th century. Heck, the Native Americans had been doing it way before that. Interestingly, the 1849 book, The Cherokee Physician, touts tobacco as a medicine that cures a gamut of problems. In volume one of A History of the United States Since the Civil War, Ellis Paxson Oberholzer recounts folks waiting for an audience with the president in a room in the White House. They covered its floor with pools and rivulets of their spittle. Okay, kind of gross. I'm guessing the government should have ponied up for some spittoons. Nasty habit, young fella. You born in a barn? El Paso, Texas was a scene of some interest. Apparently, a drunk man dropped some money on the floor of a saloon and another patron picked it up and stashed it in a spittoon when accused of theft. Of course, folks had been using the cuspidor all night, so retrieving made for a messy situation that eventually ended up in a courtroom. Towards the end of the 19th century, tuberculosis was so widespread it became a global health issue. Scientists and physicians thought it was transmitted through saliva and soon, spitting in public was against the law in many major metropolitan areas. Missing a spittoon when expectorating fell into that danger zone. <coughs> That's the rumor. Medical folks urged business owners to put carbolic acid in the receptacles to thwart the spread of disease. Even pocket cuspidors were encouraged. By the 1940s, most spittoons were removed from establishments altogether. Nowadays, you can outfit your saloon with replica spittoons, even though there was a push in the mid-1900s to destroy old spittoons, many of them still exist and are on the antique market. In fact, people collect them. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. Sorry about that.